Last episode, we arrived in Yamba after our first coastal passage. Champagne's gone bad. This episode, we head up the Clarence River and go on a dirty mission to find some crabs. Oh! oh. oh. Sailing up the Clarence River, and we are going to meet the Harwood Bridge. There's a, there's a new bridge which is high enough, and then the old Harwood Bridge, which is like a lift bridge. And he's got three openings today, six quarter to one and five p.m. So yeah, looking forward to it. We're stopping the clean tonight. Apparently they've got hot showers, free power, water on the dock if it's not full. <laughs> like marina service, but. So we'll stay there tonight and then go to... Hopefully, if we get a spot. Yeah, if we get a spot, we'll just anchor if we get it. And what's happening with the wind? And uh, with the wind? Yeah. The wind's good. How fast are we going? What's this, give us a breakdown. So yeah, we're doing average speed about 5.3 knots, but we're getting up to about 8.2 was the max speed, just with the head sail. So it's pretty nice, great sailing. Got the whole river to ourselves, nice and wide. A lot of room for error. And and for us to tack and jive our way up the river. Oh, tack and jive or just for our autopilot to wig out. The Clarence River weaves its way over 245 nautical miles inland. It supports a huge prawn fishery and Australia's oldest sugar mill. It can be a little bit tricky to navigate the Clarence with the huge volumes of water that move with the tides each day, but if you're smart about it, you can use these for a fast ride up or down river. Dobbin on their dad. <laughs> what did they just say? So, saying we just went under. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hole in the back of the boat. Oh, that's good. Don't have to anchor. Heaps good. Look how fast we're going there. What's up? We're doing like four knots, no motors, no sails up, just the windage on the boat and the, and the incoming tide. The Harwood Bridge is one of the last working vertical lift span bridges in Australia so it's a bit of a novelty going under. Oh, I don't like looking up there, it is really nerve-wracking. Looks like it's gonna hit, doesn't it? <laughs> we made our way up river. It was a totally different sailing experience with cable ferries, farms, cows and the cutest little prawn trawlers I've ever seen. How weird is it sailing through farms? Yeah, <laughs> we, we could just hear cows mooing. With the public dock full at McLean, we decided to push through to the cute little town of Elmara. We pulled up alongside the dock at the small town of Ulmara, 30 nautical miles up the Clarence River. Well, that's the master of the boat. Yeah. It's a local pub. Nice place. The future and your With the ease of stepping off the boat straight onto land, we checked out the local second-hand shops and enjoyed a few cold brews at the pub. Michael's goal is to find a glass bowl. I need to find it myself. Yeah, it doesn't count. It doesn't How count much is that? 250. 250, that'd be one. Doesn't count if you buy it. Doesn't count, no. What are your thoughts on Elmara, Jess? Nice, such a cute little town. So we've actually driven through here, I don't know, half a dozen times over the years. It never actually stopped, so. Definitely what I like about sailing is that it sort of forces you to stop and then you're walking because you don't have transport so you really get to soak in the atmosphere. It's a really nice little town. What's going on out here Michael? You're up early. So I came out to have my coffee this morning and I just saw the bait just working all around the wharf here. And uh, yeah, there's heaps of herring everywhere. So I got out this little bait jig. Uh, sometimes they call it a sabiki rig. It's just like a 
four, six hooks, tiny little hooks like that. And uh, basically you just put a weight on the end and you just drop it in the water and you just pull out the herring. So they're just, I forgot the, the exact species, but the type of herring, you're allowed about 100 here in New South Wales. So they'll be really good bait for later. We'll freeze some and uh, use it in the crab traps later when we get back down river. Shame you can't use the cast net, you'd be done in two I seconds. I know, the cast <laughs> net was, would have been good, but this is a lot. It's probably why they're here still. It's probably a bit tidier, but look at this. I don't know if you can see that. Watch this. Hang on. <laughs> Easy as that. Getting a little, oh wow. It's quite effective. Oh, that's point. a little tailor too, look at that. Oh, that one okay. So you see that's, a, that's just your regular herring there. And that's a little chopper tailor. How cool is that? <laughs> Put that's him back in. That's size, so I'll chuck that in. Like this place, Michael? Very nice. Good dock. Free water, pub just there, heaps of herring for bait, <laughs> awesome, just... yeah, awesome little stop. Get out of here this morning early enough to grab the tide out of the Yeah, so the, the tide's river. pumping out now, so we'll just uh, hitch a ride back that way. It's going to be into the wind all the way back, more or less. Uh, we'll probably just have to motor back to the broad we'll water. practice our pointing skills. We could do that too. Yeah. <laughs> See how we feel. All right, let's the line. With a 24 hour limit on the public docks, we grabbed the run out tide the next day down to the town of McLean. As we pulled up, we were greeted with a huge street market and the sounds of bagpipes. We spent the day exploring the little town of McLean. So we're heading back down river today, we're going to head up to Iluka or Gamba and uh, looking forward to heading out there and hopefully get some biz, do some diving and at least a beach to swim at. Yeah, a beach to swim at with, with relatively clear water and uh, you can put the muddy traps in and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. So we're just about to go back through the bridge so today. The bridge opens at 10.30 so we'll leave now and come on Jess. Oh, just melting here when the bridge to open up. It is stinking hot. Armed with our fresh herring we caught up river, we head up some muddy little creeks to look for the perfect spot to drop our pots. They're like little Mara herring. How about this crab pot, Michael? It's very shallow. What are we, an hour off high tide? So it's gonna probably spend most of the tide out of the water. Swim time, it is hot. After spending most of the day trying to cool down, we went back to check the pots. Would you look at that? What were you saying earlier, Michael? <laughs> I said it doesn't look like the same spot. I reckon you're in the wrong area. <laughs> so, Michael told me I was an idiot for putting this pot in public view, and he told me that it's gone. You're an idiot, and it turns out that we were just in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> wrong channel. I told Jess. Uh, wrong channel. And there it is. There's the pot, the risky pot. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're allowed, Jenny's here. Yep. Oh, would you look at that? Me, 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 me. New South legal. Definitely. Hell yeah. What crap? Hey, baby. 
sand tailed buck. Oh, oh. oh, that one's legal. That's a nice one. Yay, I got a crab. I got a crab. I got a crab. Yeah. Making up. Yeah. Oh, what, what the? the that? Oh, no. This boat is getting. That was out of the tube. Yuck. White was not a good choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a nice one. Got the measure? Why you make them on longer sticks? <laughs> yeah, he's legal. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. One? Four traps, two bucks, and what's that one? Jenny. Take Jenny's in New South Wales. After making an absolute mess of our tender, we were going home with a couple of decent crabs well, for dinner. Well, you just drag out the beach and just throw buckets on it. <coughs> throw myself in the water. Bloody nice, though. Some nice muddies. What are we doing on this beach, Michael? <laughs> the boat. <laughs> She's with Dottie. Yeah. This place is just so beautiful. It's beautiful driftwood on the beach, pelicans, dolphins. Boats right there. This place is just picture perfect. An absolute mess and we got three nice sized crabs so we've cooked them up uh, now in exo sauce so yeah I'm just going to fry the noodles up now and then we'll cook the crabs up um, like just pre fry them a little bit just to get them hot and cook through the meat I know you've got fresh seafood when half the crab is still cooking Oh my gosh. Whenever I'm cooking any Asian dishes, just get a little bit of um, garlic and ginger and season the oil. And then um, and you, see the oil you, you just cook it for like a minute until you can smell really good garlic and ginger, like that delicious cooking smell. Take it out and then I put the seafood in. Basically, I just want to start them cooking. I don't want to completely cook them. If you had a lid, put it on now. And then we'll add the exo sauce. Watch out, exo. Yeah. Fry that up. Put it in the oven so that's starting to smell pretty good. Now, you don't want to cook it too much. Watch out. Stock, sugar, soy, and salt. Food coma. How was that, Michael? So good. <laughs> Unbelievable. What do you reckon? It was better than Pippi's? Yeah, different. I think it's better. You added more garlic this time. It's a bit better. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can't go wrong with that XO sauce. Yeah, it's it's basically the same recipe with the Pippi's. You just cook the crabs at different stages. Mm. With the water too dirty to dive, it was time to head south. Join us next episode where we head off to Coffs Harbour. Look at them all! <laughs> if you're new to the channel, be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. A huge thank you to our patrons for your ongoing support. Going to the boat. That one's Jones and big time. Yeah. You got there, Michael. <laughs>
Very right, topping. In Canberra today, man, a baseball match between the Adelaide crossword bananas. I love crosswords. Maybe they did actually read them for the articles back then. Hold on.